So the Diva, open back, planar magnetic, Bluetooth capable, but not required, $300 headphone coming out of Heifman. Um, it's, it features kind of this weird conglomeration of a bunch of different uh, kind of shapes and styles and weird influences from different Heifman products and some completely new stuff like this headband. We'll talk about that in just a second though. Uh, so first, kind of the, the build and the build quality for it. Um, it's about what you would expect for 300 bucks. Some parts are metal, like these brackets here, I feel like are metal, uh, these grills here, but the housing uh, outside is plastic. This is plastic, and then this, I, I believe it's fake leather. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it is fake leather. Then you have the fairly standard Heifman um, kind of hybrid pads that have the fabric on the part that touches your head and the, the pleather or the leather on the inside and the outside of the actual ear pad. Um, and they come in tan, but the build and quality and feel is very similar to most of their current headphones, like their Sundara, their Aria, uh, even their HE1000 has very similar pad structure to this. So when I first saw pictures of this thing, I'll be real honest, it looks a little cartoonish. It's better in person, but still, I don't know. There's something about it that looks a little cartoony. I think it's the bulkiness of this headband. Like it's just really, really thick, um, but it does look, it looks more premium in person than it will in this video or in lots of pictures or videos that I have personally seen. Uh, the build quality is actually fairly light. It's coming in at 360 grams, which is pretty good. Not sure how much this weighs, but it does add um, a little bit of weight and actually a noticeable amount of weight that when you have it plugged in and you put it on your head, um, it actually has a slight tilt to the left. You actually feel that more than I had expected you would. Um, now it's a pretty bulky system, but we'll talk more about that in a second. But for now, let's talk about kind of the size and the fitment of this. So I'm on uh, either the bottom or close to the bottom uh, extension. So it's the, the least extended that it can be and it can extend all the way out this far. So if you've uh, worn headphones that fit me, but don't fit you because your head's a lot smaller than mine, this may not fit. Now, a couple of notes about the headband. I think the radius is gonna bug some people. It's not, you know, the, the widest set headband out there. So uh, for my head, this fits pretty well, as you can see, like I can feel it all the way across the top here and it spreads out pretty evenly. I think for some heads that are wider up top and you have like a blockier head, you might feel a little bit of hot spots on the edges here and you may not be hitting it right on the top and having that even spread like I do. So while this is a very comfortable headphone for me and I tend to be right in the middle for comfort, I like most things most people like, um, it's not gonna be for everybody. So your mileage is gonna vary there. Now I did take off the pads. Uh, visually, this driver looks very similar to the driver in the Sundara. And on their website, they do uh, showcase that it does use a similar tech to the Sundara, at least similar tech, where it's their, their Neo driver, they call it. Um, and this is trickled down technology from a lot of their higher end headphones actually. Um, so I'm not gonna say it's the Sundara driver because uh, it doesn't sound exactly like it, but visually it does look quite similar. Last build notes on the actual headphone itself. Um, when you take this off, this 3.5 millimeter, which is only on one side, is actually a balanced 3.5 millimeter and they do provide a, a uh, three pin 3.5 to four pin 3.5 and that four pin 3.5 is what you would use on here. So you can, if you want, I believe, run this balanced. And I think this is actually a balanced uh, Bluetooth module. If I'm, if I'm understanding how this is working correctly, because it does have a four pin 3.5 millimeter coming out of this. Okay, so this unit, right? It's, it's big. <laughs> like compared to the size of like an Apple earbud, <laughs> which has all the tech and the driver and the housing structure all in this little tiny looking thing. This is huge and it's got not a lot of weight to it, but 
you know, it's not super, super lightweight, but I really like this as a Bluetooth solution over something like the Ananda. I don't know why, but it just, it seems like a more elegant solution where you can remove the additional weight and additional confinements of a Bluetooth item from the headphone and just plug it in anytime you want. And for me, I don't know why. I just, I prefer that system rather than the always built into it system of the Ananda BT. Also, if Heifman chooses to do this in the future, um, I could see this being very valuable for just having one of these that you can just pop onto different Heifman headphones. And that might be something that they're working on. I have no insider knowledge. I'm just, I'm, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt thinking that they thought ahead because that's what I would do with a system like this is just take it from my Diva to my, uh, you know, whatever the headphone is. Okay. Um, so another thing that I noticed is that the actual headphone itself um, is sort of inefficient for a Bluetooth headphone compared to what's standard. Uh, it's only it has an impedance of about 18 ohms, which is pretty low, uh, but the sensitivity is not very high and it's actually about 93.5 dB per milliwatt. But one thing I did notice is that on the back of the box for the Diva, it says that this has four hour battery life. Um, and it, it comes with this in the box as you guys saw in the unboxing. Um, but if you look at the manual and this thing they call the Blue Mini, I believe, um, it actually says that it has seven to 10 hours of battery life. And uh, it does have a built-in microphone. Um, oh, and also the weight of this, according to this, is 25 grams. So you got 25 grams of additional weight when this is plugged in. Now I'm gonna have to run through the functions of this guy in the full review, but I can pretty much already tell right now that in terms of the modern Bluetooth era, this falls a little bit behind. A lot of modern headphones have the basics covered like, you know, play, pause, rewind, repeat, uh, volume up, volume down. But a lot of them nowadays also have gesture control, um, even things like, like profiles that you can enable by selecting a button or using an app on your phone that is gonna give it a certain EQ preset. So this is a little bit behind on the times, but in terms of the purpose of it and what it's designed to do, it's pretty cool. What I'd actually be interested in doing um, on a side note is maybe plugging this into, although I don't have a cable that will fit with this, but maybe I could find a way of, of plugging this into another headphone and seeing what the sound quality of this specific device is, because all I have as a reference point is the Diva. And this early on in having this product, I've only used it with the Bluetooth, so I can't say I'll bring that up in the review if it's if it's anything notable. So as a disclaimer here, I got this a couple hours ago. It, uh, they recommend 150 hours burning before you do any you know harsh judgment of it. I plan on doing that, um, and I've only listened to this on Bluetooth so far, so that is only going to be what the first impressions is about. Um, and then I'll get more thoroughly into sound with wired versus Bluetooth in the actual review, as well as probably comparisons to other headphones. So uh, the first thing you notice is the crispy, crispy type of sound that comes out of here. It's definitely along the lines of kind of a traditional Heifman um, sound signature. Um, it's very, very open sounding, even with like, you know, there's not much blocking the drivers. It's a, like, this is obviously just a, an open back headphone with a Bluetooth module, but you know, of open back headphones, uh, like many planars, it sounds very, very open. There's not a lot of dampening of the sound in any particular way. But when you're actually listening to the music, um, what surprised me a lot initially was how wide everything sounds. Um, it sounds quite, quite wide actually. Now the overall sound signature of this, I would most uh, closely actually equate to the Heifman Sundara. This reminds me a lot in many ways of the Sundara. There is an audible noise floor. Um, it does seem to go away in between tracks. So if you like play something and then pause it, the noise floor drops almost like the amp turns off or goes into standby mode and then it kind of boots back up. And then if you click play on a song that has a quiet part in the beginning, you hear a little bit of this background hiss, but uh, that's pretty much inaudible when you're playing at decent volumes. And speaking of decent volumes, um, I guess we should talk about the power output of this. Um, it's not super strong. Um, I can max this out on my phone and my laptop for most songs, and I'm not gonna necessarily enjoy my time with it like that, but it's not something that I would rip off my head screaming about how loud it is. And in quiet songs, I found it to be just about perfect actually. With this device so far, I'm usually about three quarters of the way up uh, and up from 
there, I never really drop below three quarters, even for louder songs. And that little device seems to be just about enough power to power this um, without hardly any extra room. Okay, so in terms of sound quality, bass response is quite nice. Uh, it's not a lot though. Uh, it's definitely got a more analytical overall sound quality. Uh, it's definitely more focused on detail retrieval and spaciousness rather than kind of an, you know, a thumpy, thick, uh, slap you in the face kind of bass. It's uh, not quite as strong. In fact, if you have a Sundara for reference, I would say that it slopes off a little bit uh, sooner than the Sundara. It doesn't quite hit quite as hard in the deep bass notes as the Sundara does. Uh, Sundara's got more of a flat, or a clo you know, closer to a flatter delivery all the way down to 20 hertz than this does. But you know, for 300 bucks and Bluetooth especially, I do find the bass impressive, not for the amount, but so far for the quality of it, it seems quite nice. So vocals here so far are good in some ways, not so good in others. Uh, the separation factor is exceptional. Um, and that goes into having that, that wide open sound. Um, the vocalist is really finite, really well placed. You can almost see the shape of the person. Um, it's very good. But uh, there is a bit of harshness in the S region, um, and it pops up obviously in, in instruments and uh, other parts of the sound that are not S's, but in that same frequency region. And unfortunately, this can honestly be a little unpleasant sometimes. Um, it's not noticeable in everything. It seems to affect certain vocalists and certain styles of, of uh, recording and mixing. Uh, more than others. So I guess we should talk about the trouble response. Uh, being a Heifman headphone, there is um, a decent bit of trouble here. It is very uh, complete, really, even all the way up until like 15, 18, even 20K, I would imagine. Although I do wanna go listen to some test tones later to verify that, but, but it does feel quite um, complete. Now, that completion, um, while probably impressive from a technical perspective, I think some people are gonna absolutely love it and some people are not. I think it's gonna be one of those things where it's gonna be like, who, depending on who you're talking to, they're either gonna be like, this is awesome, very complete, very crisp, uh, or they're gonna be like, ouch. <laughs> now, one of the reasons why I bring that up is because uh, while this is similar to the Sundara in a lot of ways, treble included, um, it doesn't quite have the total resolution. And again, Bluetooth, so the wired version could change after burning could change so just you know wait for me on that one but as of right now the trouble does not resolve nearly as well as the sundara i'd call it like 90 percent of the total resolution capability of the sundara um, and the sundara definitely edges it out in that clarity uh, area in that detail area although this this kind of keeps up with it um, but it's not quite to the same level, but still pr pretty good. And then that leads us to the final area of imaging and soundstage, which is awesome. I mean, for $300, uh, Bluetooth module, no Bluetooth module, it just has an open back headphone. This thing, uh, soundstage is quite well. And I would actually consider both imaging and soundstage to be very close to the Sundara. I don't know exactly. I'm going to do uh, a comparison between the two this weekend but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. All right, and that will lead us into my conclusion statements and kind of some general thoughts I have about this device. So I don't even know if this is necessarily a niche product really. Like it's, it's marketed as a niche product. Like it's got this Bluetooth module. It's got looks that are, are sort of atypical for Heifman. The color scheme's not uh, totally abnormal. Like you had the HE1000 V1 and V2, but generally speaking, they centralize around dark colors, but um, to me, what this seems like, honestly, so far, is a another option somewhere actually in between a 4XX and a Sundara. And it's it's priced in there, and it just happens to come with a extra option of being Bluetooth. That's what the sound quality is so far, the build quality even so far, it kind of seems like it fills that gap. So one of the main questions I wanna answer in the review is basically if you're just looking at this as a headphone, Bluetooth you know, not included, Bluetooth taken away from the equation, is it gonna be worth it? That is something that I'm looking to answer. But Bluetooth does come with it. So where do I see the use cases for this so far? Um, 
especially being as open as this is, like it's not even like semi-open, like it is open, open. Um, it's gonna have specific use cases, right? You wouldn't wanna take this on the subway or the train or an airplane because you know you don't wanna share your music with other people and you don't wanna hear other people and that'd be the purpose of wearing those headphones out in those areas. Um, I could see maybe office spaces or people who really, really, really hate cables. Um, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> in these two hours, they were pretty awesome to just be able to stand up, walk around, move the lights around for all this whilst I'm kind of judging the headphone, listening to the, to the headphone. Now, another use case I could potentially actually see for this, and I, I don't know why I hadn't thought about this for other Bluetooth devices before, but um, it's entirely possible that this sounds better than your onboard sound. So if you don't have a dedicated amplifier, which I think most dedicated amplifiers, like, like that shit Heresy, for example, outperforms this thing like night and day, I can already tell you that. Uh, but it's not Bluetooth, um, and you may not have one of those. So this may be an alternative option to otherwise worse sounding onboard audio. You know, I could see that being the case for specific people for sure. All right, so I think that's all the thoughts I have on this so far. I'm curious of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please leave them there. Any questions that you have for the review that I think are relevant, I will definitely add to the review. And uh, you can definitely look forward to that. Probably not next week, but probably in a couple weeks. And I definitely wanna get some real listening timing with this thing, definitely burning in. And I have a lot of other products like uh, and a lot of other reviews like that HE60 coming out. So should be pretty fun. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, my name is Josh, signing off.